another that thrilling guy. episode. Who's always showing up there? I know that guy. I know yeah. that guy. I want to One second. I like her face. Three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another exciting edition of Lounge Academy. Make some final adjustments to the cameras here. There's always things to do. I know that's why the early birds like to see the behind the scenes stuff. Yep, we're on. Works. Hello, and Ron Reinhardt is the first cadet to view the spectacle of Lounge Academy this particular Friday night. How are you, Ron? We're broadcasting from the heart of downtown Buffalo's Coral Lounge District, nearby City Hall in Niagara Square. Hopefully, Barbara Fischel will be uh, joining us and saying hello. I hope so. She's a home favorite. <laughs> On my left, your right, is president of WBIG TV, Ryan Lysars. Hello, everybody. And to his left, <laughs> The girl is Mary Kunz Goldman, co host. And the other guy, the hipster looking guy, that, that's our very own Bob Davis. And you guys just missed out on a beautiful jazz set that he, he Bob Davis, played while we were preparing to go live. He was warm, he warmed it up. It's like. That was for our, our own pleasure. It was for our own pleasure. He pleasured us <laughs> yeah, I with his playing. Pedal. What? Did I say something wrong already? So I had to use a soft pedal to do that. <laughs> he soft pedaled it. Yeah. And uh, president of the Jackie Jocko fan club, Aubrey Clark. Audrey Clark is out there. Nice to see Audrey. New Year once again, Audrey. My monitor is not showing who is here. No, you have to have the uh, ultra secret. Let's see if I could get that. Uh... Always sensitive. Oh, my God. Oops. No, that was not for public. That was not for public. Hi. Hi, Barbara. Barbara says, hi, everybody, lounge cadets, back at ya. It's a warm night here in Buffalo, and it's supposed to change, like, what, any... It's supposed to change as soon as we got to get in our cars and go to church. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, it's going to get back to its usual, more seasonally miserable temperatures. We really like it, though. We do. Yes, I know it adds to the season. Yeah, it's still the Christmas season. It is the Christmas right. season. The, what is it, right? The time of day of Christmas. Hope everybody had a great. I trust yes. everybody had a great New Year. <laughs> and even then, it continues after that. Yeah, candles. But yeah, Christmas tide. Christmas tide. Christmas tide continues. Yes. Yes. I don't take down my trees. Say hi to Daryl down in either. Florida. But you've got a real tree on your right. Oh, Happy New Year, oh, sir. Okay, that's good because oh, well, normally you will go the distance. Yeah. I don't yeah, I can't that. believe I was going to discuss that with you. The, the um, rash, I should call it the rash of people who are taking down their trees. Yeah. Very, very early. Why would you take it down even before New Year's? Some people take it down. Yeah, some people take Not it down. Not before the like And they're taking it down. Yeah, some people are like, okay. to break through to 2020. There's something like cleansing about and fresh start. 
It is a um, it's a neat sounding year in 2020. Not only a new year, a new decade. That's up for debate. That's for debate? Oh, when the decade starts? Because technically the decade supposedly starts after 2020. Oh, that's good. 2021 is when the decade starts. Oh, according to the official people. Who's the official? Don Paul? Yes. Nobody really thinks of it that Yeah, I think of it just in terms of because there's just a different personality. How pathetic of you. The one thing we can all agree on is that we're selling Christmas time. Or pedagogical. What's the difference between pedantic and pedagogical? It's just different. It's the beauty of the English language. No one knows what the hell it means. Special guests, the producers are going to surprise me with. <laughs> Last week we had Mary Kate O'Connell, among many other major name entertainers. Hmm? Time will tell. Is that a request? Time will tell. But I won't tell. I will tell. So what the hell? If you don't kiss and tell. We'll find out because time will tell. by Bob Davis. You never know. You never know how much I care. You never know if it's really my hair. Quest for some great, great tunes. Oh, they love it. 
shouldn't I? This is the theme for the next decade. Why shouldn't I? Right? Why shouldn't you? Can you really give me a good reason? We made it this far. I just shared it to myself. Because I don't think it's, I don't know that it's on my, on my Facebook profile. Now it is. I assume.
watching Lounge Academy on Con Ed's Friday night, and it's between 7.15 and 11, Buffalo Lounge Time. That makes you a lounge cadet. Right, Jim Russer? <laughs> liking our stream. That, that uh, adds your social credit scoring system here at Lounge Academy. I see Paul Kokoda walking up the Lounge Academy runway by the ticket booth. He is not carrying a pizza, ladies and gentlemen. Well, then don't let him in. He's carrying a big, he's laden with a, he's a heavy plastic bag, bag, which he's is soon to be outlawed in the state of New York. All plastic bags are outlawed. We're all going to be carrying. When did that happen? It didn't happen like today, did it? Like Jan or January 1st? Gee, I could have I think we should underground the bags. Make a, it'll be like, um, since it's the 20s. This, instead of booze, they're outlawing plastic bags. We That's could right. we could do bootleg bootleg bags. We'll big plastic bag parties here. This is gonna be a big burden on people who need to pick up a dog crap. Yeah. Yeah. What are they gonna do? Let's go to the Dollar Tree and buy a dog waste bag, sixty for a dollar. But they're flimsy. They're not. Yeah. Like, Except There's one thing, right? one product you don't really want to be flimsy. Are they paper? Well, no, they're plastic. Oh. You can buy plastic oh, bags. But you, you can't just can't get them, get them for free from the store. Oh, oh are you sure? Yeah, like so the know. stores aren't allowed to yeah. give them away. Like you could still go to BJ's or one of those restaurant stores and oh. you could buy a big box of plastic bags if you wanted, but you just can't get it for free from your local from their local retailer. Yeah. Yeah, I love the way Dollar Tree gives you a ton of So you could go to Wegmans and buy a big box of bags, but then you can't ask them to put it in a bag so you can carry it to the car. Yeah. And now Topps is selling these heavy duty plastic bags for five cents or ten cents or whatever they are. For so Topps for doesn't have plastic bags anymore? Well, they, it hasn't taken effect oh. yet. So they oh, they're, still have they're voluntarily compliant? Well, no. Oh. So they can sell them for five cents. They started phasing in these bags for sale because I guess they must qualify as reusable bags even I though they're just a plastic bag that you have to pay money for. So the human spirit cannot be compressed and held back. It'll, like weeds, it'll find the cracks in the sidewalk and life eternal. And that's what's happening with this plastic bag ban that isn't even into effect yet in New York State where everyone's already figuring out the hacks. I didn't think of the little doggy pooper bags that you were talking about. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of, there's always unintended consequences so are they still when something living? new kicks in. Oh, yes, that's right. Do they still give those out in the park? I see those. They have those I, dispensers. I think so. Oh, I did not know that. I've seen those dispensers from a long time ago, and they kind of bug me because I thought that'll be an excuse for people to leave the dog do lying on the grass saying, well, the thing was out of bags and you know yeah. oh. pass that responsibility onto the state i don't like that i don't like that for yeah. fun bags. It, to oh, me like a top nice. bag it's it's nice and sturdy yeah. when you're going to pick up that pile you feel like there's a real barrier but these dog waste bags they sell they're they're really thin it's oh. like now, now ryan you you don't have a dog well you seem to be pretty well equipped to discuss this, this <laughs> issue He's I, I, I don't know if you know this but we have a, uh, a free trial of a dog right now. Oh my well, gosh, this is breaking now. news, ladies and gentlemen, right here on WBIG TV. Let me put my news hat on. Here's my, my news. So, hang on. You didn't say anything about a dog. There's a dog living at your house? Yes. Kind of on probation? On a trial basis. So, well, how big Rich is this? Rich Sellers is here. Hi, Rich. That's a ride. Tim Hortons, Tim Bits. Oh, man. Wow. Ryan got a, a dog in that's on probation. It's a purebred Patterdale Terrier. Really? Apparently, nobody's ever yeah, heard of a Patterdale Terrier. Sounds Terry. expensive. Wow. I think they're lying. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's from a dog How rescue. You doing? Good, thanks. You should flip it. He's little. He's like 25 pounds. Oh, man. Is he as big as Rosie or a little bit bigger? Bigger than Rosie. He's almost four. That's a nice age. 
He almost looks like a, a mini lab. A mini black lab. Wow. Why wasn't this all over Facebook? Because because it's still on trial. It's and still you, on trial. And you didn't want to like yeah. everyone yeah. to hate you for giving it back. And yeah. I'm in, well, yeah. And, and I'm firmly in the camp of give it back. <laughs> I see. Well, I know you're not a big pet guy. No. I know. I know you. And you're on your bucket list. You want to get a uh, a rat. Well, a rat is the only pet I would want. Well, maybe you could reach a compromise and uh, keep the dog, but you get a rat. Well, I think the dog might eat the rat. But no, animals sometimes understand, and they take it as a pet of their own. I, I did see a story about a, a dog, a cat, and a rat that were all bonded. And they had to be adopted as a trio. They were all bonded, the dog, the cat, and the rat? Yes. Oh, oh man, I can smell them from here. They had to go as, a, as an act. There, there was someone who came in who was interested in adopting the dog. And nice the to cat. see you, Jim Russell. Nice to see you relaxing with a cocktail. Around the I piano. The, 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 the shelter persuaded them to take the rat also. are wonderful, are they? No. They serve no purpose. They're nothing but a burden. Yeah, wait till that little dog steals your heart. You'll be a changed man. I have no use for a pet. All right. See, you're the, you, that's why you need one. Break through. The only person who matters in my life is me. Look who's here. It's dusty. It's dusty rose, ladies and gentlemen. That's because we are closed. I gotta admit, it's a little more intimate here than the red I'm almost out. Oh. Whose house was that? Gary's. 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 <laughs> Gary's. <laughs> well, it was kind of a bear, but you didn't know whose house it was. <laughs> I know. That was fun. That was a nice yeah, that was a, that's a nice way to spend New Year's in yes, Casa de Marino. My, it's a new year, and my brain's a, little, a one year older. <laughs> so. Yeah, well. It's definitely more intimate than Morgan's, especially now. Oh, you know. That guy really, he, he's become a pretty good piano player. Yeah, he? it's too good. I wish he'd stop practicing. <laughs> I noticed that. Man. How's 23? Shout out to my nephew, show business great, Jeremy yeah, Brown, Joe Wall, my old pal, yeah. Suburban Lanes. All the big stars are here. Dan's here. Escushin, how are you, sir? Mary Jane Smythe. Disappointed that the holidays are over? Yeah. <laughs> it's been for Brian and I were going to request chestnuts roasting on it. And open the commercial it. section of it is over. Brian and I told that they do not end until If you're Monday. devout enough, the holidays never end. Christmas goes to like August 1st. Yeah, they used to do Yeah, so one of our families. Mary's in that club. What's that, Parker Coda? Yeah. We'll see. That's right. I just had a big conversation about this before you got here. Yeah, we'll keep it eyes up there. Yeah, yeah. Dig it out for me. I think it's in. See if it's in this book. Yeah. Well, it's a 50 50 chance it's in that one. But 
key was that? California, Joe. Is that where you live now, or are you just out there surfing? I was 23. Almost wrote open to it. Oh, good. Oh, you found it? Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad he's doing well. I'm glad he's bathing. Maybe he'll tune in. No, nah, it's in the people's key of E flat for all those keeping score. Surprise me. It's not an impossible song to know, but how many people would know this song nowadays? Well, yeah, well, of course. He loved this song. He played a lot. He had all the, you know, this group that came in there. Everybody loved the song. There's always so much in the first certain night. Right, it's the busiest. Right. That night we met. It was magic. Sherwin. No, that's why I didn't know it. Ladies and gentlemen, Bernie's, Bernie Magis is in the audience. The great Mr. Show Business. Speaking of Mr. Show Business, walking right behind him is our own Barry. 
What's your progress report, Barry? How you doing now that it's 2022? How are things looking? Is it 2022? It's 2020. Thanks for This is why he's the president. He's, he's detail oriented. I thought maybe I fell asleep. I don't know where I got 22 from. There's a little bit of multitasking going on when you're when you're in show business. Right, Bernie? Oh, Joe Wall's uh, visiting his family in California. Remember Joe Wall from Suburban Lanes? He was, he, he was uh, part of his father's electrical contracting company. They did the electrical work. They were always working on something. What were you guys working on at Suburban? You were always over there with, with all your tools and stuff, but I don't know what... Running new, running new circuits? I don't think he is. But, but you knew you knew Joe Wall. And I painted his Corvette. It was a thrill for me to paint. It was the first Corvette I ever painted. It's 59. This thing was beautiful. And it, it was kind of a restoration job. And um, I think he stripped it. I think, he, I think he did the stripping, and then they, they, they wanted somebody to paint it, so I prepped it. And I, I believe we used, Joe Wall, tell me if my memory serves me right after all these years. This was like in the mid-70s, right? I think we used, we did not paint it a stock Corvette color, because people were not concerned with that at the time, about originality with those cars. And we, didn't we use... Jaguar Ocean Blue. Was, was it Jaguar Ocean Blue? And we, it was a very translucent color. It was almost like a candy. Where was I painting the cars? My parents' garage. That 59, what a cool car. And then I think I used that same color on my uh, 69. Olds F85 that I bought for $1.37 from my cousin. And I think I used that same color. I probably had some paint left over. It was lacquer, acrylic lacquer. A lot of work involved in that. Now, those Corvettes came with acrylic lacquer, so that was actually... It was the white on red? No, I didn't paint it white on red. That must have been later or earlier. I'd remember if it was white on red. I didn't paint it white. I think I painted it blue. Come on, it was your car. I think I still got some blue uh, drips on my paint gun. I was, I was digging through my paint equipment this week, the old stuff from the 70s, making it go. You still have that blue paint. I think I do. You're gonna paint another car. I probably have a little can. Leave my little can out of this. Anyway, anyway, you, you, you I guarantee you guys know each other. You have the equipment to dry lacquer? You don't dry lacquer. Enamel. You're thinking of enamel. The lacquer is like dry before it hits the car. That's, it dries. It's like ether. Yeah, I used, I used lacquer. And then you have to sand it and rub it. It's a lot of work. It's brutal. The modern paints are way easier. Everything would go wrong every time. It was really temperamental. Wait till uh, Dale, Dale Pine chimes in. He's a car guy. No, the, the lacquer is, is the paint. Acrylic lacquer. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then I probably clear coated it with lacquer. Off of your car in sheets for two years. Yeah, especially yeah, especially on like white crown mix from the factory. Yeah, but the new the new paints are not just in the cart segment. Um, I'm convinced the new paints. They try to tell you you know epoxy paints. They're, they're each they're better and better. They're not. They're I think they're just um, you know they're they're. 
It was it was all environmental regulation, and it was more poisonous. So, for the guy painting them, it was more lethal. Yeah, or maybe it's so you die, but the world. Is it could be fifty percent less poisonous, but you have to paint the car three times. So you just yeah, it got more expensive each time too. I still I'm still trying to figure out. I'd like to bring back the twenty dollar paint job. Remember Earl Scheib? I'll paint any car for 1995. So we're gonna look who's here. Now the party's gonna start. How was the Skyway on your way over? Oh, you didn't come that way. The grounded. Boston Hills. I know it's that downtown this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. 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 Jeremy Brown is requesting a, an improv. You can do that. It's actually easier to improv than play songs. Because you can do whatever you want. Harry tuned in to see all the beautiful women. That's why I tuned in. Here's a little improv for my nephew. 
of you. You still out there, Jeremy? I think he improvised and left. Because you, we, you know, she's immersed in it. I know where she got it from. Yeah. <laughs> satisfaction of admitting she liked it. Discovering the songs in that other book, though. Yeah. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just strain my eyes. Let's try this book. Car commercials was for the Mobile Deal Calais in 1985. Their tagline was the Tomorrow. There's so many options when you're starting a new year. You can go in any direction you want. This, this is a more uh, a broader book. Yeah, it's, it covers right, like, I gotta write that down. Well, the farther you go east, the more you are. Oh, yeah, great, great songs here. You just have to be able to, like, like microfiche. Hide your heart from sight. Walk your dreams at night. It could happen. 
Johnny Burke and Jimmy Van Heusen. Well, yeah? Can you believe it? Of course, it? I should have known, but yeah. Johnny Burke also wrote uh, Pennies from Heaven. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. And I was it's a Johnny Burke night. It's, it's, a Johnny, yeah, it's funny how like, recurring yeah, names yeah. come on certain nights. So was Johnny Burke. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. And then Sinatra pulled him away from uh, Johnny Burke and then to uh, Van Heusen. Sinatra put him with Van Heusen. We went to our friend Gary's.
Thanks, Barone. Thanks, Jeremy. Matthew. Yeah. Your sweet expression, <laughs> the smile I give oh, you, such a song. Oh, this really gets me. Yeah. the way you looked when, when we met, it's easy to remember. Mississippi. It's from a movie called Mississippi. Were you still on uh, It's Easy to Remember? Yeah. Rogers and Hart, everybody. Dave Corbin, Mike Piatto. 
Great to see so many big show business names tonight. Mike Beato, I like that. Uh, like those televised pieces you did, cutting your Christmas tree into pieces. Clever man. Next time I'll, I'll lend you that prop, that stage prop. Use the uh, use my gas chainsaw. Just to get everybody off balance. Jackie will love that. Dave Corbett might be stopping down a little later. Buffalo's cartoonist. Who's Stike Party? Yes. We played it in our house. We played our wedding. Oh, you're right. We had, we had a stag party. It was just a, we just went to see Jocko. That was a stag party. Gee, I, thanks for reminding me of that, Rich. I, I don't know how else to make my list. I just forget. You're very geeky. George was there. Everybody, somebody. Who else was there? Somebody. Uh, Ari Silverstein yeah. was there. George was there. Almost like being in love. Yeah. Yeah. Can you like Everybody, that? somebody's full. I don't know if I'm familiar with that song. I don't know that song. Look it up. Either. See what else you got. Nadine has her wish list on her phone. It is my wish list. Find um, what else you got on there? The way you look tonight. You gotta, you gotta find the uh, songs for me to yeah, do. Yeah, you should follow Cheek to Cheek yeah. with Lady Adele. Line them up. Get me, get me some of mine. Yeah, you gotta do, uh, you gotta do your own paperwork. Oh my <laughs> God, Howard! <laughs> I think we should start looking for songs from a hundred years ago too. Now that we're in the twenties. 
Oh, you're right. This is from 1921. Yeah, we should do this. We can do it next year. Are any of those books arranged by date? There's got to be a way to look them up on the internet. Right. But I guess we do. But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But it would be fun to do songs from the 20s, specializing in the last 100 years ago, but the whole decade we could do it. Yeah. One of my first jazz records that I got. Mary Kay don't count on those, the words. Swing of the 20s by the saxophone player Betty Carter. Of course. And that's when I got to know, because some of them were from a Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Boy, so that must have come out in the 20s, because I remember that swell. What show are you working on now on Mary Kay don't count on? This heart of mine was doing very well. The world was fine. As far as I could tell. Are you aware that singer Warren song? Spontaneous for my nephew Jeremy Barone. He likes spontaneity. He is a spontaneous guy. That doesn't surprise me. Of course, you have a funny style. How did we never do this one? What's that? Here, let me have that blue book. I'll use it to prop this up. I use it as a mechanical device. Okay. Oh, I see where you go. What are you talking about? There, you hit on something, right? That's what this one has. This one has. Gets in your eyes. 
house. He's here and it's 2020. Well, this sounds like a really intriguing uh, production you're putting together, Mary Kate O'Connell. It's called Glorious. This is going to be their next presentation at her theater. The true story of Florence Foster Jenkins, no relation to Bill Jenkins on Grand Island, uh, the world's worst singer. Was, was it a movie as well? Which part are you playing, Mary Kay? You couldn't possibly play the world's worst singer if you tried. As great an actress as you are, you couldn't act. No, no actor could make you into the world's worst singer. Although, I don't know. I've seen you do some wild things, though. Spontaneously, right here around the piano. surprised if, you, if you've got that role. Which role do you have? Who, who plays the singer? Actually, that would be, that would be hilarious if she did that. She could make that really funny. Mary Kate O'Connell. See her in the role of that, the world's worst singer, Mary Kate O'Connell, portraying that role. I don't, I don't know if she's, I don't know if that's her character in the production or not. But she'd make it really funny. Would she online with you right now? I'll do your house if you want. But if you want me to do Richardson, I'll do that. Are you playing the? Uh, oh, she is. She is. She's Florence. Well, that's going to be great. Which was more difficult to sing between the keys? It is. It is difficult to sing between the keys. What do you? Have you started doing it yet? It, when you purposely try to sing between a pitch, that is that is hard to do. It's easy to do when you're not trying. To. Wow, that's great. From her company and went we won't and they're closing up shop and it came fingers. from the company. Oh, put your fingers yeah. yeah. No. I put it in my That's so exciting. Oh, I don't have you. one. We needed one. We that's were gonna so we buy did. one. I knew we needed one because all those pictures kept the raggedy edge on. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Brian, is that the door in there? It sounds like somebody familiar. It is somebody very familiar. It's Kathy and Nick. Look at them. Their New Year's resolution was to come to Lounge Academy. We have an elite cast here today. Mary Kate. Mary Kate opens in February. You don't have any problem? Oh, Barry. <laughs> Oh, that's great. They're over there at the rehearsal lounging room, lounging lounge academy over at Mary Kate O'Connell's. You know why? Because they're studying how to sing between keys. Yeah, how should I take that? You guys are boning up for the world's worst singer by watching us and listening to me. Well, you came to the right place. That's why it's called Lounge Academy. by request. It's a girl from Lackawanna.
college when I get recruited to play a, a wedding by the guy who always by this guy named Barry. His name was Barry, just like our Barry. And he would just grab you and throw you, slap you into a band and throw some music in front of you. He was great at getting these, these gigs on the fly. Michael Gray. How are you, Michael? Oh, thank you, Mary Kate. <laughs> I know I'm going to hear myself in your role. <laughs> I 
Gagalari taught me that one. Who? Guy Gagalari. Oh, of course. He played it here. That's how I learned it. I was listening to the, the re, watching the rerun. I, think, I knew that song. Yeah. Was yeah. Song. He sat down and no one was paying attention or, you know, it was a kind of a loud room. And he sits there and almost bashfully goes into a number. And it's this song. It's like, I didn't even know he noticed he did it, you know, at the time. And I just, I got to find what this song is about. It was by Walt, Walter Kent. <laughs> 1952, a, a show called 17, which was a remake of an earlier one. Well, there you go. Were you 17? How old were you in 52? Because the show is called 17. Keeping it to himself. Keeps his cards close to his vest. Mary Kate O'Connell is going back to her script now after taking a lounge cadet break. We'll do, Mary Kate. Thank you for the inspiration. And 21, okay. But he was lying about his age. What was that, Alan? They just, they didn't check. How could they? What a great way to start out a new year at Lounge Academy. We've got all the heavy, the heavy hitter cadets are here, um, electronically and sitting around the piano. It's really great. Mary's wearing one of her sparkly dresses. Here's another. You guys, let me know what. That's amazing. They must be so happy to have you with somebody. I think the other camera is better. Here's a perspective shot. Here's the hair cam. A split shot. Anybody here that has not written a book? I know Nick has. If they ask me, I could write a book about the way you walk and whisper and look. I can write the preface. On how we met, so the world could never forget. And the simple secrets of the plot, just to tell them that I love you a lot. Joey. 
Speaking of Guy Valeri, that's, that's, he tells me that's the show that really got him rolling with his music. Yeah, really inspired him. Who's the blonde that played in there? Kim Novak. Kim Novak, wow. No one? He got inspired. I'm sure that Kim I would have been inspired with Guy Valeri. Side by side. I don't know, but he looks like Exactly like him. I don't know what he looks like. Here's one about the Buffalo waterfront. I cover the waterfront. I'm watching the sea. One I love coming back to me. I cover the waterfront. Of the sea, covered by the starless sky above. Here am I, patiently waiting, hoping it will get Oh, how I yearn. Where are you? You're forgotten. Do you remember? Will you return? I cover the waterfront. The sea, the one I love, soon be coming back to me. Okay, who wrote that? Johnny Green, who also wrote Body and Soul. He got it. Johnny Green, that's where he's really known. This is like the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Those songs. <laughs> Amazing. I didn't know what time it was then. I met you. Oh. What a lovely time it was. How sublime it was, too. I didn't know what day it was. You, you held my hand. Warm, like the month of May it was. And I'll say it was grand. Grand to be alive and be young. Mad and be yours alone. Grand to see your face, feel your touch, hear your voice, I'm all your own. Learn, you didn't know what year it was, life was no prize. I wanted love, and here it was shining out of your eyes. Then I know what time it is now. It's just too funny. You should see it. You think it's funny. You can't unsee it once you see it. Though. Wonder who's at the door. You can't unsee it once you see it. So you gotta be warned. Wow, look who's here. It's actor Dave Lundy. This is great. Talk about show business. Here's his theme song. I'll play him in with a song. Dave Lundy, ladies and gentlemen. Great to see you. He's probably back from some show business rehearsal. I think everyone's in rehearsal right now. I don't think anything's playing right right after the holidays like that. Everyone's putting the new shows together. I would imagine because 
He's, looks like he just came from rehearsal. I get no kick from champagne. Mere alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. So tell me why should it be true? I get a kick out of you. Some get a kick from cocaine. I'm sure if I took even one sniff, it would bore me terrifically too. I get a kick out of you. I get a kick every time I see you standing there before me. I get a kick, though it's queer to me. You obviously don't adore me. I get no kicks in a place. That was Cole Porter, of course. Thank you, everybody. I'm glad of that. This is a great way to start the year. I was, I was hoping everybody wouldn't be too. Just, it makes sense, though. Like this is the thing to do after going through that that egg beater, right? Everybody looks relaxed. Before they walked in the place, everybody was probably like going postal, right? That's how effective Lounge Academy is. And lounging, that's why lounging exists. It's to relax. Hey, isn't um, the song Smile, isn't that from the 20s? It's got to be. Charlie Chaplin yeah, wrote it. But maybe not today. <laughs> I've got the words here. So. <coughs> where, where, where were you rehearsing? What's uh, the school? It was a Klein Hands. Klein Hands. Rehearsing Midsummer Night's Dream. Midsummer Night's Dream, ladies and gentlemen, coming up. They do a very funny voice, but it's a little straining on the voice. Oh, I see. He was doing voices and straining. Medicine? Yeah. Those timbits are really good. That's gorgeous music. Oh, isn't it incredible? When's it open? In, in uh, February? No, January 17th. Just one weekend. Oh, well, you don't have a lot of time. I do what I can. <laughs> With what time I have. Yeah, it's, what, it's how it goes, I guess, right? We always tell people around here not to make any plans, right? It's kind of a tagline with WBIG TV, don't make any plans. I guess I'll have to change my plans. I should have known there'd be another man. I overlooked that point completely until the big affair began. Before I knew where I was at, found 
myself up on a shelf and that was that. I tried to reach the moon, but when I got there, all that I could get was the air. My feet are back upon the ground. I've got the one girl. This isn't going to be Welcome to the Boring Twenties, right? sensibilities are all coming back again. This vaudevillian Yeah, I know that. Things. I like that. And the musical A Connecticut Yankee. Yes, it's funny. is relaxing along the Lounge Academy tonight as, as is Zach, Zachary. He's checking up on things here as we spouse it here at Lounge Academy. I love that. Nice to see you, Zach. Happy New Year once more. These mortals be? I was just thinking about Lord. Everybody, how many people went out on New Year's of our cadets? We kind of went out. We went to a, a private house party, a small Gary Marino jam, as most of us here know. Even Paul Kokoda was there. That was fun. That's a great way. I like spending New Year's that way. I like spending New Year's that way. You know, it's, it's easy. You go there, you hold a drink. You know everyone. You know, you go out somewhere. And, uh, it's really loud. We had some big New Year's parties here. We have some very good New Year's parties here, I think. And hopefully we'll have yeah, more. Hopefully we'll have more. Maybe that should be my New Year's resolution. To get this place freaking doors open by New Year's. You know? I think we could do it. This is a real hip oh, uh, Nineteen twenty song. Yes. More than you know. Oh, that, that is a great nineteen. Great, wasn't it? Great nineteen twenty song. That is a nice one. Early twenties. That was. Remember that that one. More than you know. This beat statue. I was gonna do it, but then I turned to this one. <laughs> Such persistence, you broke down my resistance. I fell, and that was swell. You're mine, and to Romeo, never, never know. I've got a crush on. With so much emotion 
It's Gershwin's 1930 published date, so they're okay. uh, writing in the late 20s. Yeah. I would have thought that was mid 20s. Yeah, that sounded very 20s. You never know how long it was sitting. Yeah, how long it was sitting. Right, right. And Gershwin sort of invented, you know, where they put the songs in the trunk. You know how they said they had the trunk song? They would write a song, oh, and you'd use it and they'd make it, oh. and then they'd put it back in the trunk and pull like it out. Bill was in a trunk. And the recycle. they did in Showboat, Bill. He's just my Bill, an ordinary... Oh. Well, I'd like to welcome Rosemary to the lounge. Yeah, but it was in the trunk. Nice to see you relaxing right. after the... I read that. In fact, the most famous one was... The big New Year's year. celebrations. Oh, I didn't know that was in a trunk. He wrote, yeah, trunk. He wrote that at World War II. Smith made it a hit in the late 30s, remember? Oh. Wasn't it in a movie? No, it wasn't it was a sheet. Radio, radio. Another request. Actually, I requested this one. I can make requests, right? That's true. Gee, I don't know. Kaliachi and stuff that they would know what that was. Because I was thinking. 
thinking that song didn't sound very old to me, but if a person was making references like that, it's probably a little bit. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. I don't know. I don't know. Thanks back I forgot to the the Voices of Firestone. I learned it from uh, I learned that song because oh no, that was on Jocko's album. Yeah. I learned it from Jock Jocko's album. Jocko really had great taste on the songs he selected, didn't he? Yeah. Paul, who wrote that song? You know who wrote it? I, I don't remember. Wow, it's still full to you. Oh, that's a totally professional. Yeah, it's a great song. Dana Porter. Oh, great, thank you. Dana Porter. How old is it? Let's see what Wikipedia says. I'm going to guess 15. I can tell you, here's another one I learned from Jackie Jocko. I don't know where they are. They were a new name for a lot of the Jackie. Home video that Melody Leibowitz. Threw up on Facebook. And, and Jocko, he didn't stick with the song. The song was new when he was doing it. He, he had this great interpretation. It was tremendous. And he didn't, I don't think he kept it in his repertoire. I think he just played it because it was new. He had the music, some sheet music in front of him. He was working out. And I asked him about it, you know, recently. And uh, I said, that song, I saw you do this song with Peter Allen. I don't do that song. I guess you don't do it anymore. You don't play it. Yeah. 
How's it go? I'm sure I'll recognize it. The words were written by Ray Evans. Here's one. Here's one I learned from uh, Dudley Moore. And he was accompanying Miriam Montgomery. Who? No, Marion Miriam Montgomery. It's hard to say. I don't know her, but I know and she was she was big in um, in Britain. Well, she was a big big singer in Britain, jazz singer. Yeah, and uh, wow, she was great. Old black and white. I saw on uh, YouTube. Look it up, everybody. Go to YouTube when you get a chance and uh, do, do Dudley Moore and uh, I'll be tired of you. And that's, that's how I got this song. Melody Leibowitz, we, you must have knew, known we were talking about you. Here she is. I'll be tired of you when stars grow tired of gleaming.
song. I like that song. Yep. Barry says it's a very sad song, Dan. It's kind of melancholy, but it's sweet because you talk about when your heart stops beating and that makes it sweet. Yeah, what's so sad about that? You like you like them to forget you. Yeah, that's right. That's why, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> what other explanation for that being a sad song? It's a beautiful song about dedication. Is that Dietz and Schwartz who wrote that song? I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Then I'll be tired of you. Yeah, it sounds like it. I gotta remember the. I think it is short. So I can credit the geniuses that write these songs that I know. He's working for Barry. Okay, are you still with us, uh, Rosemary? If you are, I'll do another song for you. Let me know if you're still there. Another song about... Actually, this one's more about lust. I should pick up on this one. <laughs> Paul's, Paul's ready. This one is from, uh, this is a movie song. From Shaft. I guess there were more than there were. I'd like to thank Anonymous for that wonderful, wonderful tip. Thank you. I think I know who Anonymous is, too. There she goes, ladies and gentlemen. Rusty's hanging. Dusty Rose is heading toward the coat girl now. We should put, we should put Dusty in the uh, coat room. She'd make a, she'd make a nice cold girl, wouldn't she? Sure. I get a lot of tips. Yeah. Dusty, stand in the little window there, the little cold room window. Sing this too, and she's she's grabbing on. She's pouring a cocktail, so we'll save it. Save it. I can't just do that one to myself. Oh, you're not the same. I just can't. Once I left, when I heard you say. That I'd be playing solitaire. Wait, I mean, was it Barry's? We finally hearing from Barry. Could you get a photo cut out? That's right. <laughs> okay. A photograph to remember you by instead. So we're trying to say. Once I left, when I heard you say that I'd be playing solitaire, uneasy in my easy chair. I lack my 
And so, and ask you to deliver some lyrics. We would never come up with that set of lyrics. In, no, in your ever. Wildest. You could try it forever. Yeah. <laughs> Barry, and we're depressing Barry. He, he he wants songs about women that hate him, that want to leave. I think is what he wants. Are you looking at me for? <laughs> Nick's got a guilty conscience. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you got a guilty conscience. Means you, you know. Means you earned it. Look at him. You ever seen a guy look so guilty? Wish I could look that guilty. I look like that when a cop pulls me over and I didn't do anything. It's the wrong time. Maybe this will cheer Barry up. Okay, we got to get something to cheer up Barry. This is this one's kind of cheery as long as you don't listen to the words. Don't listen to the words, Barry. This is this is a song Jackie Jocko used. I don't know if you ever noticed it. He was ever like mad at somebody and just like didn't want to ever see him again. He played this song. I've, I've seen that routine before. <laughs> this song would come out. What, just one of those things? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just one of those things. Just one of those crazy things. One of those bells now and then rings. Just one of those things. I know why I got that. Just one of those nights. Just one of those fabulous flights. Trip to the moon on gossamer wings. It was just one of those things. Thought of it. Barry. 
I get too hungry. <laughs> Mary gasped at dinner at eight. I like the theater. Dave Lundy he never is late. I never bother with people I hate. That's why the lady is a tramp. I don't like crap games with barons and earls. Won't go to Harlem with ermine and pearls. Won't dish the dirt with the rest of the girls. That's why the lady is a tramp. I like the free, fresh wind in my hair. Life without care. I'm broke, that's oak. Hate California. It's cold and it's damp. That's why the lady is a tramp. In arms, too. Well, yeah, but you know what Pal Joey was? It was an amalgamation of a whole ah. bunch of Rogers and Hart songs that nobody knew. And they were great songs. That's really what Pal Joey was. I see. I remember you, you've uh, tutoring me on that fact. I don't know if I told you, but I, I did know it. Great to see you, David Sutter. Well, do you know Dave Sutter who, uh, likes, likes the band lights. So do I. Buddy, Buddy Greco? You know who Buddy Greco was? Buddy Greco, piano player. He had a huge hit of The Lady of the Tramp. So he did an upbeat version of it. It was a huge hit, you remember? That's why I'm You say either. Nick says either. You say neither. Nick says neither. Neither. Either. Neither, 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 neither. Let's call the whole thing off. You like potato. I like potato. You like tomato, I like tomato, 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 tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. Oh, if you call the whole thing off, we must part. Oh, if you were ever part, that would break my heart. I like pajamas, I like pajamas, you wear pajamas, give me pajamas, for we know we, so we better call the calling off, off, let's call the whole thing off. 
That's as Gershwin as you can get, huh? Thanks, Nick. Ira Gershwin would just create words when he needed them. Did you ever notice that? No, we, no, we, no, we, what's he saying? Yeah. yeah, right, come to think of it. <laughs> I mean, that's what I noticed. Here's something from Shaft. Wait, here's another ballad, David Sutter. They were thieves. They were what? Thieves. Don't misunderstand. Yeah. Howard, do you want back to it? Good. We are only strangers. Awesome, just before New Year's, right? No, no. This is good, thanks. I'd apologize for that. She brought me, so. <laughs> you know, sometimes somebody would come to the door and I don't recognize them. That's you know, happened to me, too. I'm kind of looking at them <laughs> yeah. with suspicion. Hoping, hoping I might have loved them. And then I'll open the door and they'll be offended. <laughs> oh. I can't count the number of gaps I've been between trying to let Who are you? <laughs> We got a couple of Mac and Mabel songs for Murray McNeil. Murray McNeil, Mac and Mabel for Barbara Fisher. Yeah, says she's watching. The great McNeil. Here, let me give you a good shot of Dave. Well, it's not a good shot. He's out of the frame. Here's, here's the back of them, Mari. See him back there? On the right, there he is. He's waving. This is a great request by the great Barbara Fisher. This isn't the song, but this is her song. 
delicious. And she requested I this. I won't send roses or hold the door. I won't remember which dress you wore. My heart is too much in control. The lack of romance in my soul will turn you crazy. When you're in need, forgetting birthdays is guaranteed. And should I love you, you would be the last to know. I won't send roses and roses.
Thanks, everybody, to the great Jerry Herman. He'll, he'll always be remembered for raising a great list of songs he wrote. I want to read poetry at some point, just so you know. We're going to have some poetry coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Stick around for the final hour. Uh, Lounge Cab Marriage is coming up pretty soon. Fourth quarter coming up. I'd like to say a word about uh, steaming hot loaf. You can learn more about it at steaminghotloafnow.com. This is all. Uh, this is it. It's um. It's what it looks like. Cool. It's like a steak. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a steak. <laughs> it's 100% whole wheat. And Oren, we, we make the bread ourselves. Okay. In the one camera? Which camera do you want, uh, Oren? How do you like this this camera here? It is, but I was just it's right. probably the best one for right now. I have mine um, covered in covered in uh, delicious butter. Well, you could put lard on it. Um, it's 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 in the car. Is it? Yes, many of your Really? Wow, that's amazing. There's a lot of nutritional um, support for that. I, I know, because we make our donuts in lard, so I researched lard, and I learned a lot of great things about lard. I do not use lard. In the recipe for steaming out well, um, I tried it. You put a little bit of lard in a bread mix. First of all, it goes a long way. It turns it into like foam rubber. It makes it so springy and jouncy. I used to have a pet newt named Springy. What is the purpose of lard anyway? I always heard about it, but we used to use it on horses' hooves, coronet pants, gasoline. I understand. I understand my my appeal to it. Well, one of its highest and best uses that used to be common until marketing companies got us to use other products. Cooking oil. It's much healthier. Oh, it is. They're finding out now. And with with fat intake, um, it's satisfying, and you don't you don't crave sugar and carbs. That's why we got we all got fat, you know, in the 20th century. What because of carbs? Yeah, Cri Cri Crisco came out early in the century. I remember that Crisco. And it was a, a solution to a problem they had, where they had all these this cottonseed product, and they they didn't know what to make. It out of, and they wound up making the stuff that looked like lard, and they promoted it as being more convenient and healthier and um, kosher, so you could bring in more segments, you know, into it that wouldn't need it otherwise. You mean to tell me they found the problem? Yeah, it's actually in the marketing books. It was one of the largest marketing efforts. Oh, marketing is incredible. You know, and. Uh, so anyway, I, I, you know, that's my own personal theory, and, and then with all these these oils and artificial things we cook in, um, you're craving sugar, and then you get the sugar spike. 
yeah, and an insulin spike, down. and then that causes irritation in the arteries, and then the cholesterol goes to soothe it, like it's supposed to, and it winds up getting a bad rap when you drop dead. And then calcium gets in there because other other dietary things, and then that hardens it, you know, and then you got a real trouble. Not everybody agrees with that, but many many MDs now prescribe to that, subscribe to that, and, and prescribe it. Yeah, it's not that controversial anymore. It sounds crazy when you first hear it. You know, it's like, wait a minute, we've been taught that kills you, fat kills you. you know? Yeah, it's about politics. Bottom yeah. election. I was in a, in a community <coughs> election of it. Like, <laughs> oh, you were in it? Yeah, like 14 years ago. That one was new. Yeah. We got some. Um, we got some poetry coming up here. A little poetry break. Interesting, McNeil. McNeil knows stuff about everything. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. It was the addition of sugar when all the fat was taken out. I know. I stopped the sugar and started taking all the fat. I lost weight, I feel great, I, I don't have to take naps. Works for me. Yeah. Which is not easy to do. Everyone wants to nap. A lot of people, you know, it's hard to do it. There's, 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 there's a trick to it. First, it takes three days to stop craving it. But you need to, you, you keep, if, you're, if you're trying to eliminate fat at this you know, stop your intake of fat. At the same time, you're trying to cut out sugar. Good luck. 
because you're just going to be craving it. That's what I found. Everyone's got different chemistry. You gotta try things and see what works for you. Don't settle for not feeling great, you know? Um, I'm familiar with it. I don't know if I've got uh, the charts. Remember when they used to laugh? They don't laugh anymore off the corner. They all laughed at Christopher Columbus when he said the world was round. They all laughed at Solomon. Edison recorded sound. They all laughed when Wilbur and his brother, when they said that man could fly. They said Marconi, wireless was phony, it's the same old cry. They laughed at me, mocking you, reaching for the moon. Oh, you came through, now I have to change their tune. They all said I never could be happy, they all have to gnash and howl. some poetry now. Hold on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. She's such a pro. <laughs> oh, Jackie's gonna have to. Okay. Jackie Z, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. Um, let's give a round of applause if you're with me. Um, let's give a round of applause for Howard Goldman. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> somebody was asking me how Howard Goldman does it. Like, how does he sing and play piano for that long? Um, it probably takes a lot of practice. But anyways, I just... It just seems long. <laughs> it just, yeah, it just seems long. Um, okay, so my name is Jackie. <laughs> Thank you for the encouragement. Uh, my name is Jackie, but I also, um, I have a stage name, and it's called Green Gymnast Stacy. And I have a sticker I'm giving to Howard and Mary um, because I like to advertise myself. And they've been very supportive of me in the past. Um, Nick was asking me what I'm referring to with green. And I have a little picture for everybody if you want to see like the green that I'm referring to. I got it <laughs> I got it off the back of a tea box. Oh man, I love tea boxes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, this is a perfect example of what I'm trying to go with when I wear the green. Okay, um, and then I have like poems that are going to turn into songs eventually. Cause when I started coming out and just singing um, 
I, I do sing a lot of other people's tunes because I like to sing that. But um, then I started to get picked on because I'm like, they're like, you don't sing anything of your own. And I'm finding out that Buffalo, my hometown, it is filled with a lot of original artists who take a lot of pride in the fact that they do do original art and they want everybody to know. So here we go. Okay. Choices don't control us. We control our choices by feeling them in our body and expressing through our voices. And <laughs> yeah, I like, I like that one and I'm turning into something else because um, I feel like a lot of people that I attract to the shows that I produce in Buffalo are very expressive. And that's how I like to be very expressive. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, here's kind of like a, like a, like a yoga thing. Um, and maybe I'm going to dedicate this to my friend, Jim Bush, who recently passed away. Yeah. Oh, um, he was a photographer. He was a photographer and yeah. he had a slogan called image. He was a wonderful is... photographer. Yes. He was a wonderful photographer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, his he slogan. Was right? He was a photographer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just two, two measures behind everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, creation on purpose is remembered. To the love I have surrendered. For me, repetition is my key to rediscovering my personal epiphany. What okay. rhymes with epiphany? <laughs> <laughs> um, to be continued next time. Thank God. I don't know if I can read that one, but I'm <laughs> okay. So, okay. Um, this one is kind of like, I'm still working on this one. It's a work in progress, but I wanted to read it to you because it's, it's one of those things that when I do read it, it sounds like it could be something, um, Emotions are oceans inside of us, designed to spill at one point or another, drawing us closer to those who can handle the flower when it grows towards the light that dims at night on the water. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, somehow like it has a rhythm to it, but then it I lose yeah. it, but then it's still there somehow. <laughs> Nick, you have to be my critic everywhere. Okay, here's a, here's one just in time for Valentine's Day. A life without love. All it is is hatred and worry. Do this, do that. Why wait? Hurry. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Does anybody have something written on a napkin that they'd like to share right now? I have, I have something that Ryan told me about earlier today that I wrote down in my little pad. It says, the tomorrow of your yesterday is here with you today. I guess it's an old ad that came from, what was the it? The 1985 Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile Calais. <laughs> <laughs> Calais. That is pretty cool. The tomorrow of your yesterday is here with you today. It was an old ad slogan, but I wrote it down enough so that I liked it. I mean, I mean, I liked it enough so that I wrote it down. That was a very good reference. Yeah. <laughs> I took a poetry class at UB and we had to read our poetry in class and it was, it's terribly nerve-wracking to do it, and then we eventually settled on this ritual where we would go to the teacher's office and drink wine beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> so that we would be able to read our poetry in class. Yeah, I had some, I had it's some rosé. It's hard to do, and you've been doing great. <laughs> and your poetry yeah. is nice. Yeah. I mean, I like it. I you like it. You read it. your poem that you made. It's difficult the to, to Ooh. speak and just Ooh. say it. About the cigarette? Did you have to do doing poetry? No, no, no. Okay. I'll, I'll continue with this thing. If I stop, then I'll just yeah. Um, why can't they leave good? Why can't they leave good things alone? 
<laughs> that are meant to be simple and pure, don't they know they're made from love and true love will conquer? That's sweet. King size is not my franchise. I prefer, <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to sit right back, right. <laughs> reflect, devise, keep the truth intact. Soon they start to realize how precious is what we have, the sun, the moon, the stars, the only earth, the earth is the only human home. We can't live for long on Mars. Yeah. You've got great rhymes. I don't think king size is not my time. <laughs> we should make a song. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, yeah, okay. Um, here's something that requires more, like, upbeat energy and stuff, but, like, um, um, that's what's that's what living's for. Move it, shake it, push, don't shove. A common mistake if you don't rise above. The BS that pulls you back under. Rather be the light than be the king of thunder. <laughs> it's very what? Poet. Poet. Poetic. Poetic? Wait a minute. Give me an hour. Okay. Give you an hour. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know. Where is the... How much time do we have? Okay. Whatever. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I just want to... I want to let you know. So I... Who here got Christmas or holiday cards? I did. Through the mail? Okay. I did. I got a bunch of... Okay. I got some too. Who here distributed them? Did I, I did. I sent some out late, but they're still going out. But I'm <laughs> yes, I always, I always used to say better late than never. I figure it's not. We have not reached the end of the twelve days of Christmas yet, so I am not late. I want to get a rubber stamp that says that, so I can stamp it. This card is not late. <laughs> it is only the twelve days of Christmas doing it, and until January sixth, my card is not late. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> I just, I want to. Um, so so I'm to, still going. I'm still um, working on them. I sent a few out today and yesterday. And <laughs> it's not your fault. It's the postman's it's fault. fault. It's almost like you're confessing. You don't have to confess. I confess. It's okay, it's okay Mary. I'm confessing that. I'm sending out my Christmas pencil. No, no, no. Well, okay, so... Um, <laughs> I went to an art opening tonight, and they were talking about how they created like their arts and stuff and like the stories behind it. And I'm not going to keep you that long, but I just want to let you know that I think that part of like the poetry and stuff that I write... Um, also goes with the way that I am. So people have sent me Christmas cards this past year. Um, and like always, I, I don't have the stamps from last year or the year before, but I always seem to notice like what they put like stamp wise. Oh, I've got the most amazing stamps. Yes. That's what I, that's like my favorite the train, part. The train You're going to write down your address and I'll send you a card. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So it's not about, to, for me, it's not always about like what's inside the thing. It's, it's all some, the it's about the presentation. Great. I agree. I like that too. Yes. Me too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> the move it, shake it? The move it, shake it. Is this the one? Okay. That's what's living for? That's what living's for? Is that the oh, one? Of course. Yeah. Okay. That's what living's for. Move it, shake it, push, don't shove. A common mistake if you don't rise above. Uh, the BS, that's short for something, that pulls you <laughs> back under. I'd rather be the, I would rather be the light than be the king of thunder. So I feel like this is, again, somebody in my life keeps bringing back the number 1111. And it's supposed to be like like an angelic number calling like all light workers um, back into like power on the earth to spread the light, spread the messages around the world instead of just keeping it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. We're supposed to house number 1111. Does anyone else have anything to say? <laughs> yeah, that's a good, yeah. That's I didn't know that about one 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 one. Me either. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Oh, the portals. Okay. Yeah, I love some. Like yeah. And so, okay, so I'm gonna to close me off here because um, I think Howard wants to come back. Um, to close me off here, I went to I went to some uh, first Friday art openings 
And if you ever get a chance, uh, right on Allen Street, there's the French girl. And she's right next to El Museo. And her name is Danny. And she's there with her husband, but she was telling me like all these cool stories about how she how she did makeup for a lot of people in like London, England, oh. and Hollywood. Oh wow, that sounds and, fun. And now she's living in Buffalo, so oh, who God, knows no. what you'll find. <laughs> we were talking about that earlier about the people. Oh, you were just talking about California. California. Yeah. You said well, that sounds maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I've only been there once, but this woman has actually lived there and, and done makeup for a lot of people, a lot of famous people. So. Really? Yeah, and now she's on Allen Street, so. Oh, wow. Okay. What, business? Yeah, it's like a, like you walk in and there's art all over. It's like an art exhibit. And then oh, she does like makeup and other unique. therapies. Yeah. What? How's your name? Yes. Yeah. Allentown has everything. Yes, so. it's beautiful. Yes. Nick used beautiful to have a shop in Oh, okay. And he's Lebanese. He keeps telling us that. He's very proud of his heritage. Okay, and that is me, Jackie Z, signing off. Here is Howard G coming back. Jackie, that was nice. We love it. We have a great break. Yeah. Yeah. Jackie Z, ladies and gentlemen. Mary, I got to tell you. Jackie's a clown. She's a professional <laughs> clown, right, Jackie? Yes. That's, that's what she does. She's good at it. Oh, the clown days of Christmas. You probably recognize her other persona. You saw her in her green hair. I don't have hair for another 11 months. I like the show. She did. Uh, she did the. Uh, <laughs> Mari McNeil says that she had uh, your friend do the. Uh, our friend. Miss Weisner, Weiser did the uh, makeup for for Mari for her one of her big uh, album covers. Corbett. This was out by request. I can't give you anything but love. Baby, that's the only thing I've plenty of. My baby. Dream a while, scheme a while, we're sure to find happiness and I'll guess all those things you've always find, or gee, I'd like to see you looking swell, my baby. Skyway home. No. Chick to Vegas. Yeah, I guess that would be. I was thinking. in the house for her 
listening pleasure, how nice. Yeah, it sounds like them. Doesn't it sound? Yeah. Sound like Yeah. That? There's... Thank you, Gaia. So much glamour here at Lounge Academy.
Well, thank you, Gaia. Gaia says we're contenders for the. Where was for the? Let me see the scope of her compliment. Buffalo. Buffalo is best dressed couple oh. contenders. Oh, okay. 
Why do breezes sigh? That's the wrong verse. Done the way they the, the way they performed it. It was the one Miller. Yeah. There was nobody more popular than him. He was the original Beatles. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, uh, always, L. Jolson. I always said he created popular music. Jolson might have been the first. The first single superstar. Yeah. Which came from that musical or that movie. Oh, 
that's how he would do it.
was a, a title number on one of his albums. Everything that's gay. If you're not there to share each lovely day, from some fake book there. They didn't even give them credit. Who? Uh, yeah. The writers. Neither of the writers? No. It's a long stream. Yeah. Darn that dream's a good song. Yeah. But you know, there's another there. one the band user wrote. Deep in a Dream? No, it's not, really. You know that? No, it's, it's not. Yeah. Classic song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what are you song? plays that one? Are you from Buffalo? Do you, do you want to hear yeah, one yeah, uh, before you do so much as you are? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have a little blues now to close out the show. Thank everybody. Make the Lounge Academy so successful. It's the cadets that make it successful. We got the best cadets.
see you next week. Stick around. We got a, some blues for you to play us out. Some great blues. Two great ones. In it. We're gonna we're gonna be done. We're, we have to close a little early. I got I got a, some things I gotta do in the morning. Thanks, everybody. Stick around for some tremendous blues here. And then we'll see you next week, same place, same time. Right, Nick? But it worked out well. I mean, I'm glad. Okay, I'm glad. We're on repeat this week. Yeah. I was practicing. I was practicing.
Davis on the piano. Richard, really like the national anthem now? Yes, sir. <laughs> there, Bowen. God bless America. Save our troops. Definitely go Bills for tomorrow, guys. Do or die. All right, Richie. WBIG. Lights out. That's all she wrote for tonight, Howard, huh? Got what happened to my little clock here for my... my so that's your new harp, huh? Yes. Yeah, See you next week, everybody. Thank you. Premiering Richie's new harp. <laughs>